So hello, I'm Frank Rinn, Heidelberg, Germany, and 1988 I started developing devices for inspecting trees. Not only the forest, but especially for urban trees. And together with my colleague John Picker from Hong Kong, I will demonstrate how to use the sonic tomography system to inspect the internal situation of such a typical urban tree. The number is determined by the tree, that means we have to check for the major roots. Okay. And every root in every space between the roots will get a nail. All right. So and let's uh, just walk around the tree and check. We need one nail here, one right. nail here. Sure. Then we have the next root going down here. Okay. So that means the tree geometry determines where we have to place the sensors because we want to get information about the major roots as they are the structural parts of the tree holding them up. So yeah, this one there, okay. then one sensor in between. The distance between the sensors is not at all limited. It can be short, it can be long, it can be even a meter. So wouldn't make sense, but technically it can be this long. So what is important that we have the that we cover the extreme points of the circumference of the tree. That means we have to put one sensor here and one in between here. And the next sensor would be placed here on this ridge so that when we discover the and measure yes that's great when we measure the position of the sensors with this setup we will be able to cover the shape of the tree because the shape determines the strength of the cross section and when we want to examine the strength loss due to decay we have to find the shape of the tree to measure it and to have it represented in the positions of the sensors so the sensor positioning is always adapted to the geometry of the tree. So when the la last nail is in the tree, we take the circumference tape, attach it to the nail of the number one sensor that is pointing north, and then we walk around the tree. Because later on we will use this tape to find the, to record the positions of the sensors around the tree. Thank you. Then we take the sensors, attach them to these nails and the orientation is so that when we have a look on the cross section from sensor 1 we go clockwise around the tree. Usually we place sensor number 1 to the north and from sensor number 1 the cable is used to connect to sensor number 2. Thank you. On the sensors there's a, an arrow pointing where the connection comes in. The next cable please. Thank you. So from sensor number two, that's the outgoing port, the cable connects to sensor number three. Each sensor has a screw and this latch and this connects him to the nail just by screwing it and then the sensor is tightly fixed to the nail and this we do all around the tree thank you very much these are standard cables fire wire cables that you can buy in every hardware shop and these cables connect the sensors if something with the cable is wrong you can just exchange it it's a standard cable and available worldwide if a nail is deep in a crotch like that, we put the sensor behind the tape. We have the sensors placed at the base of the trunk because most of the time in urban settings decay starts in root area because of trenching or root cutting. And so most of the time the decay is coming from the root system into the base of the trunk. And because of that we mostly scan at the base of the trunk. In some circumstances we may have to check the tree upwards but in most cases, I would say 90%, we check at the base of the trunk. The last sensor has an incoming cable and no cable coming out. That means one of these two connections of the last sensor remain open. The first sensor is then connected to the battery pack for power supply and communication to the computer.
When we have all the sensors connected and the battery pack connected to the first sensor, we switch on the battery pack. This switches on the power supply to the sensors and we now have to check if every sensor shows a green light, except the last sensor showing orange. So now we had the measurement tape around the tree and now we will record the positions of the sensors on the tape. That means we will pull out the computer and I will walk around the tree and giving numbers of positions to John to have it recorded in the program. We have 13 sensors. Yep. So sensor one has three meter fifty. 350. 350. 350. Sensor 2 is at exactly 26, but we put in 25, 25. because we don't want to make the measurement sound like a scientific precise measurement. So 25 is good. Sensor 3 is at 45. Okay. Sensor 4 at 60. 60. 60. Sensor 5 at 90. Sensor 6 at 115. Okay. Yes, sensor 7 at 135. Okay. So, after we power the battery pack, we check the connection from the battery pack to the computer. That means in the computer we have to start the Bluetooth connection to the battery pack. If the connection is established, this LED will be green. And the next step is to tap on any sensor to check if the sensor numbers are correctly represented in the computer. That's fine. There should be a sound on the computer. In the first column of the positioning table, we see the numbers of the IDs of all the sensors. The next step now is to put in these deviations of the sensors from a circular stem. The software now assumes that the stem is circular. Obviously it's not, so for every sensor now we have to put in another number showing and describing how far the sensor is away from the circular cross-section, that means further out or further in. Sensor 1 is approximately 20 centimeters further out, the average circular size of the stem. That means sensor 1 gets a plus 20. Okay. Sensor 2 is further in, a minus 5. Sensor 3 is nearly on the on the circular shape, so it's a zero. Sensor four is a minus three. Okay. Sensor five is a plus ten. Okay. Sensor six is a minus fifteen. Seven is plus five. Eight is zero. Nine is plus three. Ten is zero. Eleven is zero and 12 is minus 3 and 13 is minus 5. Then we can switch on the recording of the data by clicking on the green button in the program that means start the measurement. Okay. The succession of tapping is not determined. We can start at sensor 1, we can start at the last or at any other sensor. The sensors detect by themselves if they are tapped inform all the other sensors through the cable that the stress wave is traveling and when the stress wave arrives at the other sensors they stop the clock. That means it doesn't make a difference if you start at sensor 1 and go this way or start at the last one and go that way. When we start tapping we always have to wait until the computer makes a beep indicating that the values have been transmitted correctly. Usually we tap three to five times on every sensor. This is to get rid of statistical noise. If we would be working at a street with a lot of traffic, we would have to tap probably 10 times. While recording the data, it is important to check the error that is inherited in the measurement. And for this, we check the so-called delta page of the program that shows the percentage of deviation between the measurements between the different sensor pairs and we should always 
if possible, achieve a precision that has errors less than 10% plus minus.